Welcome back. We have Dr. Jennifer Dick joining us, a naturopathic physician, and we always welcome you and your props. I love this setup that you have going on here. It really gives us a visual. So thanks, thanks for Beth. being here, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. Um, we're talking today about uh, what can keep you up at night, uh, and it's all sort of relating to uh, blood sugar levels. And it's something I don't think a lot of people realize could be the reason why they're not sleeping and waking up at three or four o'clock in the morning. So um, how important are is it to stabilize those blood sugar levels? Yeah, it's really important. I mean, blood sugar is very inflammatory to the body, so we have to keep it normalized. 55% of people generally have issues with falling asleep or staying asleep. Right. And where I see in my practice, it's usually that 3 a.m. wake up call. You wake up, all of a sudden you start thinking about your day. You have that anxiety, you might have that sweat, you might have you know, thoughts of your grocery list, yeah, and you just can't fall asleep. <laughs> you just can't fall back asleep. That's where I see most patients coming in with, with sleep disturbances, and almost always it's because of fluctuations in blood sugar. So okay. you really want to make sure that for the rest of your day when you're not sleeping, you're eating well and balancing that sugar throughout the day. So food could really really uh, plays a huge part in that because I don't think that you that people at least I didn't know this until today when when uh, I knew you were talking about this on this segment uh, that you know what you eat during the day can really impact your sleeping it's a, like you think okay what you eat during the day well that might impact your weight or it might impact something else uh, to do with your life but I didn't think about sleep right so what what are we looking at here? So these are all the different so things, So we're looking at some good and some bad here. Yeah. Hopefully you can all, you know, pick out what's good and what's bad. But basically, uh, the World Health Organization stated a few years ago that adults should be consuming 25 grams of sugar or less a day. Okay. So you may think, well, that's easy. I don't eat processed food. So there are a few things here that are quite processed. Um, you know, the whiter products, the white breads, mm -hmm. the bagels, all that easily have that amount of sugar in one serving. But ironically, you know, I picked up a, a healthier juice option, something with fruits and vegetables, same amount of sugar as we see in the soda. And this, so... Same amount of sugar. So really check the labels? Really check the labels yeah. and understand that if you have a glass of juice with your breakfast, you're kind of done for the rest of the day. Really? Yeah. Okay. For sugar. Good and sugar is also in other foods that are processed. We're not mm -hmm. talking about fruits and vegetables, the natural. If it looks like how it grew on the tree, you're safe. But as soon as you start to process that food, you lose that fiber, you lose the protein, and that's what helps balance blood sugar. Okay. Um, so these are, so it's not necessarily what you eat before you go to bed, but also, like you say, in the morning even. Absolutely. So what do you have here? You have some seeds. So we have some, some different things flax here, of course. And chia, maybe. Is exactly. That what so these are the good ones. So you've got seeds that are high in fiber, also high in good fat. Mm -hmm. This is almond flour, right? So for people that can't cook with, or they don't want to bake with that whole, or the, the white flour yeah. and the white sugar, you can go to something that's not as processed. It does, still contains some fiber and some protein to balance your blood sugar. Um, and really incorporating all of these rules into your breakfast. Okay, would you recommend sprinkling any of the flax or chia on your breakfast or on yes, your lunch? Yes, or in your smoothies, on salads. Okay. Just to give yourself that extra fiber and that extra protein. And I've heard that with flax, and I don't know about chia, but that it's better if you gr if you ground grind it up if you grind yes. it up. Is if that true? If you grind it up, you will yes, you will allow yourself to absorb those omega threes and omega sixes, which are very important for heart health and a lot of other things. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously protein shakes. That's something I know a lot of people decide to take part in, especially in the morning when you're rushing and trying to get ready and don't have a lot of time to sit down and eat your breakfast. Yes. So breakfast, the word, is literally break fast. So the word breakfast came from, what do we break our fast with, <laughs> yeah. right? You've been sleeping, you haven't eaten for maybe 10, 12 hours or longer. You need right. to break that fast with something healthy. And you want high levels of protein, good fats. So, for example, if you're going to make a smoothie, grab a good blender, get some good uh, fiber-containing uh, protein as well. You can add avocado to create more of a creamy nature to it. Uh, coconut oil or MCT, oil, also very good for the brain and great to help balance that blood sugar first thing in the morning. What about fiber? Yeah, fiber is that other important component. So fiber, really high in your fruits and vegetables. Um, that also helps balance blood sugar because it absorbs water, it absorbs your sugar, prevents that huge spike and that huge drop. It's the drop that is what wakes you up at 3 a.m. It's not the blood sugar spike, it's actually the drop, which causes an increase in adrenaline release. 
Okay. Which we all know what that does, right? Yes. Adrenaline is what gives you that anxiety yeah. sensation. Um, that's what keeps you up at night. That's what wakes you up at 3 a.m. So keeping that fiber throughout the day, especially at dinner time, so that you will have balanced blood sugar while you're sleeping. A lot of people have dessert after their, their meal, after their dinner. Uh, are you mm. going to say a big no to that? Well, it depends on what yeah, what dessert <laughs> is to you. If you're doing, you know, like a Greek yogurt with, again, okay. some, you know, blueberries or some flaxseed, again, you're getting protein, you're getting fiber. Okay. That will balance that blood sugar. Okay, so there is a way to get that sweet taste, but do it healthy. Exactly. Good. Okay, yes. well, thank you so much, Dr. Dick. Appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Uh, more information, if you want to get a hold of Jennifer, please do so uh, through her website. We'll be right back. Stay with us.